The first keen presenter for this session is Mr. Said Abul Fazli. He is currently a PhD scholar senior research assistant in high impact research projects such as mobile cloud computing and device and connectivities. Founded by Malaysian Ministry of Higher Education and part time lecturer in the Department of University of Malaya. He received his Master of Science in Information System in 2008 from India and Bachelor of Software Engineering in 2001 from Iran. He is a member of IEEE Societies and IEEE CS Cloud Computing. He has been serving as a reviewer for several international conferences and ISI journals. some extent the general concepts of mobile cloud computing. In this talk, in this brief talk, I'm going to talk about mobile cloud computing which brings cloud computing to the mobile users. And I'm trying to draw a general picture and show how mobile users can benefit from extremely infinite computational resource of cloud. So of course not cloud in the sky. So we will see what sort of cloud I'm talking and I'm referring to. Brief motivation about the mobile cloud computing. What is the research problem that mobile cloud computing tries to solve? Objectives of the researchers in mobile cloud computing. Mobile cloud computing itself, that we will call them MCC, now and once. Then I will talk about cloud-based researchers, cloud-based resources. Then this MOMCC which is the work that I have done during my PhD. Uh, I will briefly present this one and its novelty and the significance of this research and this presentation will end by conclusions and list of publications. Okay, mobile computing, I'm sure that every one of you at least have one mobile device in your pocket, if not two or three. So they are rapidly growing among users and according to the statistics, the shipments of mobile devices from 2011 has already surpassed the shipments of desktop. So it shows that people are not anymore interested in desktop and they're trying to use mobile devices wherever possible. So mobile devices are everywhere, from healthcare to education and even online banking. So according to the International Telecommunication Union, the number of mobile subscribers have already reached the number of people around the world. So it doesn't indicate that everyone in this world has a mobile device, but it shows that there are people who have more than one mobile devices. So we can conclude that mobile devices are the future of computation. So they have already penetrated in people's life. If we assume that this gentleman presents the traditional lifestyle, people used to move out with their tools and drilling machine and painting tools, now the mobile computers have changed their life so much that people, instead of taking their tools, they take just their computers, their heart control devices, their cell counters, tablets, robot painters, and so forth. So it shows the penetration rate of mobile devices. So these are all very good and exciting things. This is what people are looking for. But what is the problem? The problem is that resources in mobile devices are very limited. They won't last for long. So if you recharge your mobile device morning at 10 o'clock, it hardly works till 5 o'clock. So this is the most pro important problem. So the, ma uh, the major limitations of today's mobile devices is the constraint CPU. They are unable to perform huge computation. The battery, of course, which is, which is very clear to you and you are facing every day. The memory which runs the application and the storage that provides you space to store your data. So still they are not very severe problems. Then what is the problem? The problem is that resource intensive tasks 
cannot be executed on mobile devices for a long time. This is the problem. You may be wondering what I'm referring to as resource-intensive tasks. In general, we have three sort of resource-intensive tasks. Computation-intensive tasks, data-intensive tasks, and communication-intensive tasks. Chess is a very good sample of compute-intensive tasks. When you are playing your turn, and now the computer wants to make turn, or the mobile device wants to make turn, it has to go through a very resource-intensive, very severe algorithm to mimic the human intelligence. So it can play in such a manner that wins the game. So this needs a lot of computations. Another example of compute intensive are 3D gaming or 3D uh, rendering that you, you are uh, uh, increasingly observing on your mobile devices. The communication intensive tasks such as, such as GPS, there are huge computation on mobile device and communication to the satellite. You need to get to know where you are at the moment. So there are a lot of communication between you and mobile devices. E-science applications like, like DNA sequencing are a model of compute intensive and data intensive and enterprise systems like accounting systems which contain the bills of the company that have already sold the items to people. So it needs a very huge storage. So now we realize that Performing such sort of task on mobile device is not a very easy task. So this will become our problem. Our problem is that, as you can see, of course your mobile device will not break, but it won't work when the limited computing resource of these mobile devices hinder execution of resource intensive tasks for a long time. You may say, okay, I can run the task, but for how long? 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, or one hour. If you can run a test for one hour now, and we in our research can help you to continue the test for five hours, is that good? So this is something very fantastic. What is the objectives of people in this sort of research? We are trying to work on quality of service of mobile applications from two perspectives, responsiveness and energy efficiency. When you are touching your mobile device, you want to immediately get the result. If you touch your mobile device and it thinks for two minutes and then replies to you, you will definitely throw your mobile device to the dustbin. So the same thing for energy efficiency. If it runs one application and drains your battery in 10 minutes, you won't like it. So this is what we are trying to solve. But how can we do that? This is not a very easy job. We are leveraging cloud resources for mobile computing. So it is called mobile cloud computing. We are performing cloud-based augmentation to solve the problem of people. Okay. What is cloud-based augmentation? Using cloud-based augmentation, we can enhance and increase computational power of mobile devices. So the main idea in mobile cloud computing is to run those intensive tasks from mobile device inside some other place. We call them remote resources or cloud-based resources. If we can do so, we are saving a lot of time and a lot of energy. So how can we do that? It is not, of course, a very easy job. Okay, when you start your mobile application on your mobile device, you suppose, uh, consider playing chess. So when you are running chess, you start playing and you move your first soldier. Now it is time to think how the computer wants to perform the action. So this is a place that your application should suspend because that thinking is very intensive. So that application suspend here, then we send execution of this application to cloud-based resources. This execution takes place in cloud-based resources, and once completed, the result comes back to the mobile device, and we remain the execution. So once the chest got the next movement, it moves, and then you can continue same. So in this way, for any application, you are able to use resources of cloud-based computational resources. So now what is the question? You may ask, okay, now what is the cloud-based resource when we are talking to, when we are talking about cloud-based resource? Okay, this is my own design. I'm not very good in designing. But this figure shows that cloud is something that you will pay for it and it gives you what resources you want. The cloud computing is not, of course, the cloud in the sky, but the cloud in the data centers. So what is the basic idea behind cloud computing? 
when you are opening a kitchen tap to drink water, you have the water. So you drink, then you close the tap. So this is an idea behind cloud computing. So from up to the onboard, you don't need to buy a very giant data center for your company to run your business. So whenever you need computation, you just open the tab of computation from cloud, get your computation, and close the tab. That's it. And you need to pay only that much that you use, right? So in your uh, water bill, you pay just for the amount of water that you have used. So you don't need to buy $100,000 as a server that makes your business work. So you can use cloud resources, and as your business grows, you can pay more and more. So this is the basic concepts of cloud. So there are three attributes on demand. Whenever you open the tab, it gives you elasticity. Means when you don't want it, just close the tab. And the third thing is pay as you use. As much as you use, you have to pay. In a journal paper that uh, me and my colleagues have already published in the first uh, board journal of computer science, we have classified cloud-based resources into four major categories. The first category of cloud-based resources are these giant data centers that already exist. But the concepts of pay as you use and elasticity exist, but they are cloud resources. The problem with these cloud resources is that they are located very distant from the mobile devices. We don't have any cloud here. Okay, the concept of cloud computing and elasticity, let me explain more. You may think that, okay, if I need certain resources, I can predict that how much resources I need. So I buy the resources I put in my company. So why should I uh, really care about other data centers? Why should I send my data and computation to outside data centers so I can use all my resources with my own uh, distribution? But the problem here is that you are required to spend a lot of time to maintain your server, which is not what business companies and business organizations are looking for. You need to provide a lot of air conditioning systems to maintain the temperature of the servers. Do you know how much do you need to pay for that? You need technician to take care of your servers. So all these costs will be borne by the servers, by the cloud providers, and then you just need for what you, you just pay for what you need. So this is the main uh, benefit of using cloud computing compared to the traditional servers. Okay. These uh, giant clouds are very powerful, they are distanced, and there is no mobility for the servers. Of course, we are mobile users, we want to move here and there, but these servers do not provide mobility. So, because of lack of mobility and long distance, people come up with a new set of cloud-based resources. These cloudlets, which are already established as a cloudlet, these cloudlets are public desktop computers in public places, like airport, coffee shops, Starbucks, cinema halls, and air lunch. So, computer in a, in a coffee shop, suppose a Starbucks, just perform a lightweight accounting system. So, it is very nice if you can sit in a Starbucks, sip a coffee, and then use the resources of uh, desktop to perform your intensive computation. So, instead of sending data to Singapore or to California or some other places. So, but still we have problem with these resources. So the third type of group, which is my own research group, is that why don't we use the benefit of all these mobile devices? In this room at least we have 50 mobile devices. So if I can make a cloud of mobile devices, so I can use the resource of mobile devices for my own mobile device. If my, my mobile device doesn't have enough battery, so you may sell battery to me, and I will pay you. So this is the third group of resources that is called <coughs> cloud resources or cloud of mobile devices or cloud of mobile devices. The fourth type of cloud base, which is for the first time proposed by me and my colleague, is a hybrid approach that we use all sorts of resources. We have mobile devices, we have computers in public places, and we have the giant data centers. So if we can benefit from all these three, so it will be much more better in terms of quality of service. So, this is market-oriented mobile cloud computing that I have proposed that is very interesting for public. In this uh, approach, I am trying to build a cloud of mobile devices. Suppose in this room, I am a mobile user with very small mobile device. The resources are very limited and no memory and no battery. So what I can do, I can build a cloud here. You people can share your mobile device resources with me. 
And of course, in, uh, uh, in just to show that I respect your resources, I am going to pay you some money. Right? So what I can do, I can use the computational resource of uh, mobile devices through the mobile network operators. I will ask him where is the next or the closest mobile device near to me. So they will introduce you, I will send my computations to you, you will make it and return back the result to me. The novelty of this approach is that this is very lightweight. It doesn't need a lot of efforts to make the, this kind of things. It enhances the execution time and energy and of course it is network friendly and internet friendly. I don't need to go through internet to make my computation works. Just from here to there using Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or any other techniques. It is cross device. My solution can run on Android, iOS, Windows, etc. And it is green. This lady may have a mobile device of Apple 4S which is now outdated. So she doesn't want to carry that anymore. She goes and buy one uh, 5S. So what she can do, she can bring her 4S into, into her pocket and lend her resources to me. And in contrast, I, I pay her, suppose, $5 a day. So it's a good deal, right? So, so you don't need to pay your, your, throw your mobile device to dustbin, so you can use it for any money. And uh, of course, it incentivizes mobile users and network operators. The results that we have done so far in a preliminary ma manner, about 90% temporal cost reduction we have in one ta task takes about 10 seconds on mobile device. In my solution, it takes only one second. And if it, it, it takes about 400 milliwatts to perform the task on mobile device, using my approach, it takes only one milliwatt, which is very significant. The conclusion, I think, uh, is not really important considering these all interruptions and uh, the things that it is already end of the day and you people are a little bit tired so I won't take time of you much more and this is the list of publication and uh, thank you very much for your attention if there is any question or any help from my side please don't hesitate to contact me and uh, again thank you very much for your patience and uh, I hope to see you again in another occasion